Welcome back to the Privacy News on Switch to Linux. These are recorded live Friday, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to come by and watch them live, interact with the crowd, uh, see all of the in-between things that do not get uh, cut out in the middle, then uh, come on by. Otherwise, uh, today we are looking at Nord VPN as the affiliate. So I want to clarify something as well, because I had somebody leave a, a comment that was a very valid comment. A while back, I did a video on VPNs called Truth and Lies and VPNs. And in that video, I say not everyone needs a VPN. And I stick firm to that. Not everybody needs a VPN. You don't need a VPN for everything down the road. But there are valid reasons to have one. You travel a lot. You find yourself open Wi-Fi networks. You're at coffee shops, things like that. Um, maybe you need to get around some geo restrictions for some things. These are all legitimate reasons to have a VPN. So that is why I have some VPN links. So I, um, uh, I use Nord and I use uh, private internet access or the two affiliate links that I have. Proton VPN is also good. They don't have an affiliate program. So those are the three I'd recommend. Uh, so today we're looking at Nord, uh, tlm.li forward slash Nord, if you would like uh, to use my affiliate link for that. If you happen to need a VPN, you can get um, Nord with uh, cryptocurrencies, any type of payment method. Um, all they need is an email address on the payment method, so you can create you know, a ProtonMail account or whatever. Um, for using this affiliate link, it helps out this channel, of course, but um, for 107.55, you'll get three years of access to NordVPN. You can connect up to six simultaneous devices, um, including a uh, like a, a router setup, and they are outside of the five eyes. So that is why I recommend Nord. And on to the privacy news. All right, so this is an interesting article here. How to track everything your baby does. Um, do we want to track everything our baby does? I mean, Houston, check the logs. It looks like the baby did, uh, the baby did like five number twos today. Um, very fascinating to know. And of course, this goes into, you know, there's apps to devices to the trusty spreadsheet, plenty of options. And uh, of course, they're looking at the gadgets and the apps and all these. So wonder what circumstances might you want this? Is this useful information? It can be. I'm not saying don't do this or it's silly to. The danger and the warning that I would have is I would never use any type of app or any other type of Silicon Valley or, or other digital type media technology to make this happen. Now, this being said, it's very good to be proactive, especially me. I don't go visit doctors. No offense if you're a doctor, but I don't trust most of you. Um, some of you I do. Uh, most of you I don't. Um, but I also have a, a background in medical research, so I'm not completely ignorant. But one of the things that I do have is I have blood, uh, blood sugar kits, I have blood pressure cups, and I have a logbook that regularly I take blood sugar, I take blood pressure, I log these things in a book. If there's some weird issue showing up, if all of a sudden I get up and my noticing my blood pressure is consistently super high for a week on end, it might indicate something could be up. You know, maybe I, I might want to go and chat with a doctor about it. If I'm seeing my blood sugar consistently over 100 after a fast, that could be a big problem. And uh, it might be something that I need to go and look at. So keeping regular logs is a good thing, whether it's for you, for your personal health, or for your baby or whatever else. I don't see a problem with this. However, the thing is, is that I completely warn against using any type of internet connected application, particularly those that want to make it all easy and cloud sync everything because that means that now some other third party company is logging, also logging and tracking everything that your little baby does as well. And that's not something that we want. So what do you guys think? Uh, do you log things? Would you trust these applications? Uh, let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, next fun uh, privacy question. Facebook is now creating a new cryptocurrency that is apparently set to launch this month. So our question today is, would you trust a Facebook cryptocurrency? Of course, this means that Facebook controls a cryptocurrency, which basically means they could see anything that you do with this. Is this um, a little goofy? What do you guys think about this? Um, is this to you a little bit freaky, a little bit goofy? Would you want... a Facebook cryptocurrency. So what can you use it with? Well, any of the in appy type things. So, you know, there's ways that you can, you know, set up a store on, on um, WhatsApp or a, 
or I don't know about WhatsApp, but Instagram, you can do an Instagram store, you can sell things on Facebook. So people can use these cryptocurrencies to buy and sell directly on the Facebook platforms. Of course, if it gets big enough, and since Facebook, unfortunately, for some silly reason is still big, this could catch on, in which case it could be started to be used in other places like Apple Pay and Google Pay and Samsung Pay and things like this. And so the problem is now is that we have this cryptocurrency thing that leads the number one spying company in the world a means to financially track you above and beyond the fact that they actually are already getting this credit card data and linking it back to you as well. We've talked about that before on the show. But would you use Facebook cryptocurrency? Let me know down below. Um, on to fun and uh, scary tracking type stuff from the Android police. Google Maps now gets on-screen speedometer while driving. So now as you're driving along, you're using your cell phone as your GPS device. It'll actually tell you what your actual speed is as you go. This means that now Google actually knows exactly how fast you're driving your vehicle. Also means that Google could potentially pass that information to the police. Remember there was a case, it was a few years back, it was a little bit of scandal with TomTom, the old famous, uh, you know, one, one of the two big uh, car GPS um, companies where uh, TomTom was actually taking this data that was collecting on traffic patterns and passing it over to police. And the police would use that data to figure out where they should sit to get the most amount of ticket revenue from catching people speeding. And this is this very similar type of situation. So now if you're using Google and Google Maps and uh, you know these services, they know if you're logged into a Google account with your device, they know where you are, how fast you're going, which also means they can determine if you're speeding and that potentially could be used against you, which is a very frightening thing. What do you guys think about that? Um, are you concerned or not concerned that Google knows how fast you are driving down the road. Let me know in the comments down below. And on to our primary, if my thing, oh boy, our primary article is not going to load. Come on, load, stupid. Thank you. All right, so um, our feature story today, Microsoft discreetly wiped its massive facial recognition database. <laughs> Looking at the fun history of all of this. First of all, raise your hand if you understood. Um, uh, that Microsoft actually had one of these. Uh, no, nobody's hands was raised? Yeah, that's right. So this is called MS Celeb. And basically what they were doing is they were grabbing Creative Commons licensed photos primarily of celebrities and public figures. So if you had, you know, you were a celebrity and, uh, you know, you had images out there, they just had bots running around scraping things, which... Doesn't surprise me. This is actually quite funny as a uh, as a web developer, and I also sell server space. I actually block Bing bots from all my servers because I don't know what it is about Bing bots, but they will actually get on your website and they they will scrape your website like 30 times over in a single day. A Google Bing bot will jump on your server and scrape one, two, three, four, five gigabytes of data off of your server in a single day. No idea why or how it does that. So I've just blocked Bing bots. But they had deployed these spiders all over the internet going out collecting any photos they could find with people, assuming they were public, and they were dumping them into this database called MS Celeb uh, for celebrity. And so Microsoft was then using this facial recognition database. They were selling it to military applications and other business applications as a means to train AI facial recognition services. And of course, in the last, uh, they started this in 2016. Well, in the last couple of months, if you remember, Microsoft has been trying to lead the charge going, hey guys, we need to, we need to regulate facial recognition technology. We need to, you know, have this responsible. We need to have ethics about how we handle this kind of stuff. And I think somebody looked over and said, uh, Microsoft, you have a database of 10 million different images that you're using to train facial recognition AI and selling this to the military. Hmm. So in order so that this wouldn't completely blow up in their face, they're like, oh, quietly, quietly delete this thing. So they quietly delete this thing, they push it off to the background, and then in the middle of this all, it, it starts coming out. Um, uh, starts coming out from uh, FT.com, I think, originally came came across this information. So Microsoft is very quietly trying to do this, and so now it just completely blows up all over the place. So uh, with that being said, with that being said, 
Um, uh, what do you guys think? Uh, is this Microsoft? Did you know Microsoft had a facial recognition database of celebrities? The good news is it was celebrities, so it wasn't the majority of us. Um, but then they secretly uh, delete the thing. They got caught in the middle of doing that. So, hey, at least uh, it's out here now. The good news is they deleted the thing. The bad news is this is after they made a whole lot of money selling it. They should take every bit of the profits they made from all of that, and they should just donate it to some charity if they're really serious about uh, about helping to regulate facial recognition. Um, it's, it's interesting. I mean, why do they have this database? Why did they start getting all that? It's weird. It raises some questions that maybe we should start looking at Microsoft. And if you're using that Microsoft facial recognition to log into your system, ugh, that's creepy. What do you guys think about all of these stories down below? Don't forget, take a look at the description down below as well if you would like to uh, follow my affiliates. And take a look at my other affiliates there as well. Thanks for coming along, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.